Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, December 30th, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. As the blizzard moves east, Krakatoa explodes. Keep calm. It's boom time. Freeway shuts down as North Dakota gets slammed by blizzard. Parts of northwest Minnesota are also under the gun. Blizzard continues into Monday. Roads closed. And that means fines. We're going to get to that. Jamestown, North Dakota. A blizzard continues to ravage the Midwest, leaving behind major drifted snow, icy roads, and stranded motorists. The week-long storm has dropped major snow, including 14.5 inches in Ashley, 14 inches in Ellendale, and Jamestown, and 12 inches in Montpelier. And it's not done yet. Blizzard warnings still in effect. We'll get to that in a minute. North Dakota Highway Patrol, $250 fines for at least 60 drivers who got stuck in the snow. Now, these roads were closed, but a lot of people are on the roads. When they get closed, like where I live, and you don't even know it. But clearly, stay home or get fined. Record-setting wet weekend storm makes roads slick in Omaha. Totally fluxed. Warm winter storm brings record rainfall to Brainerd, Wisconsin, Flux there as well. High winds cause damage. Leave thousands without power throughout the greater Cincinnati area. They were High winds were toppling trees and power lines across greater Cincinnati, causing damage and power outages. Some gusts were up to 55 miles per hour, and we can come here live and check out Ohio. 45,000 customers currently without power. 33 up here in Michigan. Most probably in the Upper Peninsula. A little bit more than 10,000 out in New York. 100,000 overall in the Northeast. Go to poweroutage.us for updates. From record warmth to snow. Take a look. Madison, Wisconsin. After a day in the mid-50s, temperatures will fall all day Monday with snow by Monday afternoon. And that is a grand solar minimum boom. Nearly 25 million people are now under a winter weather alert as we head into 2020. It's not even funny. His outfit, slightly, but I digress. From the Dakotas to New England, people are waking up to snow Monday as the year comes to a close. Nearly 25 million people will be under some sort of winter weather alert Monday morning, according to CNN meteorologist Robert Shackelford. Blizzard warnings expected to last into the Dakotas and Minnesota through Monday morning into the early afternoon. The system hitting is the final big storm for the Northeast this year. Yeah, because we only have 24 hours left. Duh. The center of the storm is in Michigan, but will move slowly towards the Northeast. Ice accumulation is possible in most of central New York and western Massachusetts. As the storm moves east, there is no need to worry about those New Year's Eve celebrations being canceled. Since the bulk of the system is expected to move offshore Tuesday afternoon. Four million people under flood watch. We'll get to the models in just a minute. New York man dies after crashing into a tree at Vermont Ski Resort. Authorities say Jason Vital, who is not Sonny Bono, died in the same way. He hit a tree at a high speed. Without a helmet, snowfall amounts. Here's your 48 hours of powers. Take a look at North Dakota, the big winner, 18 inches in some regions, the big red. South Dakota also picking up 18. These totals are going to – look at this here, 36 inches, bottom left corner. I did not hear about this. We're going to have to look into that. That is an amazing total. The snow now building in New England like we forecast. New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine are going to be the big winners over the next several days. Long-term forecast. Big flakes falling at Wolf Creek. This is my neck of the woods. Thank you, Joel, for the photo. British Columbia, Monday through Tuesday, is going to be hit big, as well as the upper Midwest and northern New England. Check out the blue circles. And then later in the week, Wednesday through Friday the 3rd, British Columbia picking up the big totals, as well as the northwest, the northern Rockies, and northern Utah and Colorado. Check out the GFS models to bring it into clarity. And we'll walk you through day by day. Four systems are going to walk across the U.S. by mid-January. Here's the first system moving to the northeast. Heavy snow coming up there in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. 
Lake effect snow in Michigan and central Wisconsin picking up the most in the next 24 hours. And then a second system adds snow right over that over the next weekend. And then another system moves through the same region. And then another system and so on and so forth. Big winners over the next week is going to be northern Idaho and Washington State where there's going to be avalanche warnings issued and it could be record breaking and we're going to be covering it for you as the records get broke and they fall. By the dozens, wintry conditions persist over the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and New England. A storm system will continue to bring snow, wind, and hazardous travel conditions early this week over the upper Midwest, which is the best, and the Great Lakes region. Snow, sleet, and freezing rain will precipitate. There I am. A lot of, someone asked why I always have a hat and a hood on. It's 13 degrees here. We woke up and it was 1. I'm in a barn that has no insulation. And the wood stove is over there about six feet away. And the propane heater is right next to me. Where was I? Snow, sleet, and freezing rain will impact much of New England into Tuesday. Some icing may be locally significant and lead to power outages and dangerous travel. Remember, poweroutage.us to check your local region and weather.gov for watches and warnings in your area. There is five counties in North Dakota still under blizzard warning and hundreds of uh, winter warnings and watches as well as icing warnings here in southern New England, Boston and surrounding areas. So click on your county for details. If you're worried about what's going down out your window, get out now. More than 30,000 people forced to evacuate East Gippsland due to extreme fire danger in Australia. These evacuations coming yesterday. Authorities of the Australian state of Victoria have ordered more than 30,000 residents and tourists in East Gippsland to leave the region immediately as bushfires have reached an extremely dangerous level. Dangerous fire conditions are expected across the state today and tomorrow, Baum said, with very hot temperatures in the forecast, followed by strong and gusty northwesterly winds expected to develop on Monday afternoon. That's today. The severe weather warning has been issued, and we will have live coverage from the ground with Giles from SolarMinimum.net. Do you hear that, Giles? Cold wave intensifies as dense fog and shrouds north India. Delhi records its coldest day in December since 1901 as the cold weather continues to pummel India. Records deepen. Record cold in Delphi pushes winter peak power demand to all-time high. 5,298 megawatts never recorded. And that is a boom. Boom to power. Seismic update. We have some interesting quakes uh, happening over here in the Pakistan region at a moderate depth with increasing intensity. So I wouldn't be surprised if a larger quake came out of Pakistan in the next few hours based on what I just saw here. Interesting quake in the middle of nowhere in Bulgaria, 4.5, pretty rare. And a huge uptick along this arc in the Alaska, uh, the state of Alaska here. And it's looking like if anything breaks off the map, it won't be California. It may be Alaska. <laughs> so, heads up, Alaska. Krakatoa, let's get to it. Increasing activity changes to Strombolian and explosive. We kicked off the forecast with this amazing photo. Just happening hours ago. Activity at the volcano has increased during the past days. Small to moderate explosive activity seems now to have become more frequent, if not continuous. Other volcanoes on the list in the last 24 hours include Fuego, Kluchiskov, Ibu, Ducono, Reventador, Sangay, and Besamiani. The Kamchatka one's blowing to 20,000, not insignificant. And let's check out the seismics over at Anakrakatau. You can see a major uptick since December 6th which would be indicative of magma moving underneath the volcano. This is, these are seismics. And this type of uptick is magma coming in. So this baby should be erupting for a while. Here are the details. The activity at the volcano has increased during the past days. Small to moderate explosive activity seems now to have become more frequent, if not continuous. Vok Darwin reports continuous ash emissions to 10,000 feet altitude, generating a steam and ash plume drifting southwest for several tens of kilometers. A webcam image shows that at least some of the explosions now generate incandescent tephra, which suggests that the eruption dynamics is changing from Surtsean, which is water magma phreatic interaction, 
to strombolian, which is just magma, no water. Probably an accum uh, as accumulated material from the eruptions has sealed off the vent, which used to be in a lake-filled crater. It also means that increased amounts of fresh magma are likely on the way to, surface, to the surface now. Large amounts of magma coming to the surface. Here you can see that plume and a crack tile. Here's the Sunda Straits, and there is the plume moving tens of kilometers to the southwest. Warren Buffett is spending billions to make Iowa the Saudi Arabia of wind. But climate change isn't the reason. Government subsidies are. He's basically milking the U.S. government and the taxpayers to put up a bunch of metal garbage in Iowa that will not produce but a few years' worth of electricity and be abandoned. He is the ultimate. So basically, when you lose your job, you apply for unemployment so you can get back all the money the government stole from you. Warren Buffett has a better idea. He's going to build billions of dollars worth of useless turbines to make a little bit of energy but they get paid big by the government. Smart man, which is why he's a billionaire and you're all starving. Mysterious swarms of giant drones have started to appear in the Colorado and Nebraska night sky. Still no answers. Still no answers. Definitely Monsanto on this one. It's my call. But here comes a warning. The drones have six-foot wingspans, have been flying over Phillips and Yuma counties every night for the past week, Elliot said Monday. Each night, 17 drones appear at 7 o'clock and disappear at 10 o'clock, staying two to 300 feet in the air. Nobody knows who owns these, but please don't shoot one down. Moss urges residents not to shoot down the drones as they are highly flammable and it becomes a self-generating fire that burns until it burns itself out, he told the Post. So maybe someone already did. If you shoot a drone down over your house and it lands on your house, you might not have a house in 45 minutes. And that's, that's the boom. Check the link below. As always, KP index coming up off the floor, so hopefully mass shootings are being reduced today. But looking at the telemetry, there is not much hope for this coming off the floor much more. Density is dropping off. Plasma speed is now down as low as 280 kilometers per second. And the BZ up here, while it had shifted and brought that back off the deck, is calming down. So it's anyone's guess who's going to get shot today. Explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. Volcano as a bubble chamber. Now the bubble chamber is the volcano's magma chamber, which is hypothetical underneath where the magma is. And as the cosmic rays penetrate the surface of the Earth, because there's no shielding for them, so it doesn't matter where you are, you're going to get hit by them, they heat the muons in the subsurface of that magma. Now, only silicious-rich magma, which is the most dangerously explosive, like Mount St. Helens. In this paper, we were regurgitating it basically weekly for the first year of the channel, and I believe it's time to bring it back for all the new viewers. If you don't know that cosmic rays cause volcanic eruptions... Read the paper. Also causes record flooding, cloud nucleation, and a bunch of crazy chemtrailers. Now let's talk more about geoengineering. All you people that think that the governments use HARP to control storms and tornadoes who have been sitting in the basement for decades, here's a paper for you. They went up there and they tried to use the ionosphere. Injection of 40 kilohertz modulated electron beam from a satellite, not from their surface, from a satellite, which can connect with the ion sphere a little bit better. Excitation of electrostatic and Whistler waves. So they were trying to control the ionosphere, which would lead them to control the weather. And guess what? <clears throat> not happening. Scientists put human intelligence gene into a monkey. That's happening. And scientists are concerned. Scientists put a gene into the monkey and scientists are concerned. Doesn't sound like many scientists are concerned, especially the ones that put the gene in the monkey. Now, you're, they're using the dumbest monkeys because there's no chance that the monkey could be human-like. That's what they're claiming. They picked the dumbest monkey, not the smartest. We didn't use chimpanzees because they might be humans. So we use rhesus monkeys because they might get pissed and try to eat us all. 
totally Planet of the Apes, totally insane, and it's and it's happening now. I mean, a guy in China edited some babies that are going to die young now, but they won't get HIV, but they won't probably live to the age to even have sex to catch HIV. And this guy's going to jail for three years, which in my opinion is a little light. But the people that are putting human intelligence genes into monkeys, they should get at least some tick there, at least a decade. That's just insane. And then they should have to watch Planet of the Apes on loop for the entire decade as their punishment. Dynamical footprints of the Andromeda Galaxy uncovered by galactic archaeologists. They're called cosmologists. That's the dumbest term ever. And that just shows that they have no idea what they're talking about, that they need to bring archaeology into the galaxy. Oh, my goodness. What I want to draw your attention is this, the blue dots and the red dots. These dots represent entire clusters of galaxies. And the central portion here is the Andromeda galaxy. So what you're seeing is Birkeland currents, filaments that come off of the Andromeda galaxy that, is, that are filled with more galaxies, like the pearls on a necklace or beads on a string. The Z pinches occur in the Birkeland current, in the string. More evidence of the electric universe and plasma cosmology idea, theory, whatever you want to call it. More evidence coming out two days ago. Magnetic ropes surrounding the whale galaxy, which is 80,000 light years across. Similar to these ropes. Hmm. Electric universe much? Are they catching on? You can catch up. EU 2020 tickets go on sale New Year's Day. It's going to be in one of the most insane cities ever. Just disgusting, racist. Ugh. If you want to get punched in the face, just hold the sign in Portland. Trust me. EU 2020 vision. I'll be there. Will you? NASA is currently tracking five asteroids that are heading towards Earth today. And none of them will hit us. But if you want to know about all the rocks that are flying by that will eventually hit us, you can come read the article. Five of them on flyby. Busted Snopes. 100% fake, man. Factcheck.org. I got this meme and I shared it. Because I know how to research, man. I got the meme and I read it and then said it. And so I shared it. Did you know that factcheck.org uh, checked on Snopes at, and they're illiberal and George Soros is their only funder and they don't have any employees? Said every right-wing idiot on the internet in the last 24 hours? Yeah, most of you are Trump lovers who don't have a second to research a thing. Now, was Snopes.com busted? And what are the ties? Guess what? Very little of almost none of that meme is true. And all I did was go to factcheck.org, which they're claiming debunked Snopes to check it out. And according to factcheck.org, and this is almost two years ago where this came out. This is how old the meme is. And how, I hate to say it, stupid the people that share the meme are. I know a lot of you listening shared this meme. And I'm sorry, but it's true. It took me one second to find out the facts, and I went to the source, factcheck.org. And let me give you the, the short of it. The meme says that Snopes was busted. It's 100% fake fact-checking site. And while I agree that not all of the fact-checking done at Snopes is correct, 90% is pretty good. And that it features photos of the Snopes CEO. Now, here's the funny thing. Where is the meme? This guy and this guy are two completely different nationalities. They're not even the same from the same country. It, you can see it's obviously not the same guy. And guess what? Neither of these guys even work for Snopes. That's how bad the meme is. The first guy is Gordon Bajnai an economist and former prime minister of Hungary. And the other photo shows Andrew Barron, the son of a late trial lawyer and Democratic fundraiser. So 
He, none of these guys even work for Snopes. <laughs> check your facts. Factcheck.org. The people who put the meme up didn't even spend one second to check it. It shows you something about what's happening. You can't believe a thing until you check it yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And the fact that it also, the meme also says there's no employees there. If you do a business search, Snopes has a dozen employees listed, 10 editors, on and on. Totally fake. This is fake news right here. Everything 100% BS. Now, this is not BS. Fossilized cannabis reveals the plant is almost 30 million years old. Well, thank God it was here before we got here. That's all I can say. And I got tons of seeds. Hope you got something out of the video. Check your facts before you wreck yourself. And that's boom. We love you, each and every one of you. Coming into the new year, think about how you can change yourself to change the planet for the better. It's that simple. Be safe.